Now turn around. Once in front of the sculpture, take the path on your right. Follow me. Fifty meters further down this path, you will see a wooden staircase on your right, set back from the path. Go down the stairs and continue walking westward towards the Concordia Bridge. If you walk straight by these stairs, you can always take the next set of stairs. We will walk along the shore of St. Helen Island and stop about 200 meters down, just below the Concordia Bridge. Choosing a site for Expo 67 was not easy. In 1963, Mayor Jean Drapeau and the Premier of Quebec, Jean Lesage, and Prime Minister of Canada, Lester B. Pearson, finally opt for the islands. A surprising choice, because for such an event to take place in the middle of a river, one must first create the site from scratch, which requires Herculean backfilling. But there's also a considerable advantage. It is a way to avoid any expropriation. The St. Lawrence River is also a powerful symbol. Initially, there are just a few small islands, namely Round Island, Green Island, as well as a larger island, Saint Hélène. Notre Dame does not exist yet. In its place are only Moffat Island and very few small islands and shoals. In fact, the site is built on recycled rock, but also for the residue from the digging of the St. Lawrence Seaway. Another development facilitates access to the exhibition. The McKay Pier is extended and becomes the Cité du Havre. You should know that the pier was first built in the late 19th century to protect the city against spring flooding. The original Ile Saint Helene was not changed. Expo had made a formal commitment, but its two extremities were extended. The McKay Pier was extended, becoming La Cité du Havre, and the Ile Notre Dame was built. The islands were made of 24 million tons of rock, much of which came from the excavation of Montreal's subway system. We're approaching the Concordia Bridge, another bold work of civil engineering. Notice its simplicity, its slim profile. At the time of the exhibition, the 700-meter-long and 30-meter-wide bridge connects Expo to the Cité du Havre, where the river is narrowest. In addition to being functional, it also offers pedestrians a promenade, viewpoints, and rest stations. I'll be waiting under the bridge. While under the bridge, you can see its huge trapezoidal box girder. The bridge is essentially that, a huge steel girder on which rests the upper platform. 
a type of bridge construction called orthotropic. This structure gives the bridge its light weight and long spans. The shape of the bridge takes the climate into account. Given the abundance of ice in winter and the flow velocity at this point of the river, it would have been impossible to build a heavier concrete bridge requiring more pillars. At the time, this bridge is the longest of its kind in the world. Let's continue our walk. I'll meet you at the tip of St. Helen Island. The St. Lawrence River is the raison d'être of Montreal and explains its development. Historically, it is the route of entry for the first settlers. It is the main trade route and the link between Montreal and the rest of the world. During the preparations for Expo, the river also plays a role in determining the layout and the shape of the islands. The architectural historian, Réjean Legault, explains how. The shape of the Expo Islands is not totally arbitrary. Once the decision was made to build these islands in the middle of the river, it was necessary to study the effects of these future islands on the formation of ice jams. Hydraulic engineers observed the stacking of ice around the St. Helens Island in the winter. The aerial views of these islands of ice allowed them to roughly define what the outline of these new islands should be. The final design of the perimeter was probably determined by the architects and engineers of Expo, but it is certain that the hydraulic studies played a major role in shaping the new islands. Once you get to the tip of Saint-Hélène, I'll wait for you on the compass rose, which you'll find on the ground. <laughs> 